Hi, I'm Kevin Lavery. In this video for Educators class, we're going to be looking at using some write-on effects in After Effects. We're going to look at the workflow between Premiere and After Effects and bring in maybe some other Adobe programs as well. This write-on effect is really useful in this scenario where you want to do some hand-drawn titles, but it's also really useful if you're going to do uh, maps or annotations or bring your attention to something or any kind of slight little animations that really help to make your project pop. So let's get started. We've got our project where we left it last time. Um, our rough cut is sitting here. We're going to do our titles on this first little bit of footage. So before we get started, I'm going to zoom in a little bit just to give myself a little bit more room. I'm going to add a still frame to the start. So I'm going to press export frame. And what it's going to do is export this frame, this still, uh, and I'm going to import it back into the project. I've got to make sure it's going into my folder. So it's going in with everything else. We'll make a new folder called stills. Import it back into the project and then I can add it to the start. And that's going to give me a bit of space to work with in this scene. I'll drag it in. That's giving me like an extra two seconds of still before the scene starts. All right. So this section here is what I want to do my effect on. So I've clicked and dragged to select it. I'm going to right click, say replace with After Effects composition. And so what that's going to do is going to try and open up uh, After Effects project. It's going to ask me to save it. I'll save it in with everything else. And you'll see it's made a composition and it's brought those two files in too. So if you've never seen an After Effects project before, in After Effects, you have these things called compositions. And inside a composition, you've got these kind of layers of files. This first one we can see here is my still. And then after that, we have my video. The whole composition itself goes for six seconds. We can see that it says 600F, which means six seconds and zero frames at the end there. All right, so we've got this to work with. Overall, it's pretty similar to Premiere. It's kind of a cross between Premiere and Photoshop. We're not going to be doing anything particularly difficult in this. We're going to grab a file, write our titles across this front here, and then we're going to send it back. If you have a look back over at our Premiere file, you'll see that it's actually got a linked composition here. So any changes that I make will actually come over here too. So if I add, let's just, just to show how it works, let's just add a big, big red circle. And that should come across here. So that's how it works. So we've got that link between the two files now. And we need something on here. We could do it on here. Mm, that's a little bit difficult for what I want. What I want is a really standard write on effect. So I'm going to open up a illustrator composition. 1920 by 1080 will suit me. I'm doing a really, really simple effect here. I'm just doing it. Right with my handwriting, I'm just going to write Monday. This thing's all about having a, a bad Monday. I'm just going to grab my brush tool and grab my stylus and I'm going to write Monday. We could make some adjustments to this. We could do things like fix up some of these tiny little points and stuff like that. The main things I'm going to do is select everything. I'm going to take it down to basic because what I'm going to get After Effects to do is recognize the lines in this file as strokes. So I want them to be as simple as possible. I'm going to make a few adjustments to the stroke, like around the edges and around the corners to make it a little bit smoother when we get it in there. But that's about it. You'll see that in in Illustrator, you've got options to do things like um, arrowheads or a dashed line. Depending on what you want, you can get some of those lines across here. We don't want any of that for now. We just want this. So I'm going to save that. We can just save it as the Illustrator file. It doesn't really matter. cool thing about After Effects is it can accept all these files and read them fine. 
All right, so I'm going to go back in After Effects. I'm going to right click and go Import File. All right, I'm going to open that. Import it as footage, that's fine. And I can drag it in. You see, it just says Monday over the top of everything. Nothing fancy so far. All right, I'm going to do right click on it. And I'm going to create shapes from vector layer. And what this does is it reads that Illustrator file and changes those lines into shape layers. The reason we want to do that is because there's a range of things that you can do in After Effects with shape layers. There's a range of effects you can add to them that you can't do with anything else. If you've never used After Effects before, basically every single one of these things has transform properties and they are that you can adjust the anchor point, which is where it moves from, where it scales from, where its position is attached to, where it rotates from. You can adjust its position, pretty self-explanatory, scale, how big or small it is, rotation, and its opacity, how opaque it is. And those qualities are present on everything. Anyway, we're going to add a different quality to this. We're going to add a trim path. What a trim path does is it trims the path. So we'll call this a path. First things first, we should turn it off simultaneously to individually. So it'll show us one line at a time to make it something we can read a little bit better. So we're going to select, change our stroke a bit. Let's take our stroke up to about 10. Set it up 10. And let's make it bright pink by selecting this stroke. All right, so we're going to do it individually. You'll notice when I take this down from 100 or up to 100, it's doing it from one end or the other. I could have one at 100 and one at. If I have them both at 100, what end does it start at? All right, cool. One thing that exists inside uh, After Effects is the way that it does your strokes is sometimes the reverse, which can be a pain. So I'm going to go into each of these groups and reverse the path. Now, that's actually pretty simple to do. I'll open them all at once by holding shift. This is a sticking point that a lot of people run into. Why is my path going in the wrong direction? This button here actually changes your path's direction. So now it's going the other way. So when we make this adjustment here, it's actually pulling from the other direction, which is, is a lot more like how we would write. All right, really simply, if we set both of these at zero. So I'll set this one up at 100. I'll set this one up at 100. We'll give it 20 frames of nothing before we start writing. 10 frames of nothing. So we move our playhead to the 10 frame mark. If you've not used After Effects before or, or you're not au fait with this in Premiere, the, the counter goes frames, seconds, minutes, hours. And frames is what makes up those fractions of a second that make up a, a second. All right, so to get us started, we're going to press stopwatch. And what that does is enact our keyframe for that. To put our second keyframe in to finish this effect off, all we need to do is get to our point where we want it to finish. Let's say it's here and then make an adjustment. So I'm going to take this down to zero. What that's going to do is have that whole thing written on. You'll see when I go back, it's filled in the gaps for us. So it's writing that on. Now that's not probably fast enough. So what we'll do is we'll select that keyframe and we'll just pull it back. If you want to make your effect faster, then you change the distance between the keyframes to make it smaller. If you want to make it go slower, make the keyframes further apart. The last thing I'm going to do is a trick called Easy Ease, where we select those two keyframes and we press F9 and it adds an ease effect to it. The way an ease effect works is that it adjusts the velocity of the change. So easiest way to look at it is in the graphing panel here. What happens is instead of it going in a linear fashion from 
100 back down to zero, this value here. It starts slower, then speeds up, and then, because it's coming up to another ease point, it goes slower again. So it means that it's not moving abruptly. Start and end points. The start and end points are nice and soft. Now, like I said, when you've got these kind of effects, there are a few different things that you can add to them when it's on a shape path. Things like a wiggle path. I'm going to change my wiggle path so it's smooth, so that it goes 20 wiggles a second. Uh, maybe 12, so it's got that kind of like stop motiony look. Let's have a look at how that looks. Pretty Monday like. Uh, we can change how much it does it to, because we just want a little bit of a wiggle. Cool. And there's some other effects we can add on too. I'm going to add a roughen on mine. What it does is just roughens the edges. Just makes it look a little bit more hand drawn. We can make some adjustments in here about how rough we want that to look. So that's looking pretty good. Let's have a look how it looks over in our project. So if we head over to Premiere. Give this a render. All right, now let's have a look at how it goes. Looks good. So I'm going to go over here and make my adjustments. If you want to reveal just the keyframes that you've been using in After Effects, you just want to press U. I'm going to move this first frame up. It's going to be room to cut off the front if I want. And I might move them both over a little bit. So it kind of starts, finishes writing as I walk in. I don't need too much of that Monday. Looks good. Now obviously, it's going to make us render it again back over here. But, overall, that's looking pretty good so far. A nice smooth entry. Our title doesn't need to fade out because our cut actually covers the move away from the title. So it means you don't have to worry about some of those little effects. When you're thinking about things like titles, you've got to think about how it gets on the screen and how it gets off the screen. So with this one, because we isolate the title to one shot, we don't have to worry about getting it off screen because it moves off screen with the cut. All right, so that's that part done. The next thing we need to do is in our next class where we're going to... All right, so that's that part done. In the next class, we're going to finish this rough cut. We might add a few more of these effects on if we like. Anything really. So that's it. Good luck. Hi everyone. Thanks for watching. Click the link in the description below to explore more free online professional development on the Adobe Education Exchange and click the link on screen to subscribe to the channel for more videos.